10 tips on preparing for and attending depositions when you're sued for debt, part two. Brought to you by Kenneth Chabert at yourlegalleggup.com. Your advantage if you're being sued by debt collectors. This is part two of this video, 10 tips on preparing for deposition. Part one is also posted. Remember that for a more thorough discussion, you need the litigation manual or the video series. This video is just intended to give you a few general hints. I do think they're valuable though. So here are the rest of the tips. Sixth, depositions have much more power to hurt you than to help you. In general, this means that the less said, the better. Seventh, remember that as long as you are not actually contradicting something you said at a deposition, you can pretty much always add to it at trial or by affidavit on a motion. But it is much harder to take things back, or if you're allowed to change your testimony at all, to do it without looking like a liar. Also, because of the way the hearsay rule works, the other side may be able to use your deposition in many ways that you can't. This, however, is offset by your ability to add to your testimony, but it means that you have little to gain by arguing with the other side at deposition. Eighth, explaining previous testimony is generally a bad idea. Stop when you've answered the question. Your main goal as a witness being deposed is to answer factual questions asked in the simplest, most direct, and truest way that you can. If you get drawn into an argument of any sort, you will probably offer information and clues that the other side didn't know about or couldn't have gotten. In general, then, don't argue or explain. An exception would be that you realize a previous answer was wrong or that the most obvious explanation of your answer uh, is both bad for you and wrong. In that situation, then, it can make sense to clear things up. Remember that your main concern in this is how a jury would hear it. The lawyer asking questions will be playing facial expressions with the purpose of getting you to hurt yourself. And that means he or she could look sympathetic, caring, believing, harsh, disbelieving, scornful, or quizzical, or any other way. The lawyer is acting on a stage, and you can't believe any of these expressions. You need to remember that. Your concern, again, is with how a jury would hear your testimony. Keep that in mind always. Ninth, the person taking your deposition can ask you what you've done to prepare for the deposition and can ask you for copies of anything that you've read in preparation. Your preparations will not be a secret. Should you read up and find out facts before a deposition, then? That depends. If the facts are helpful to you, you'd want to know them. For example, if you know that the company suing you is suing the wrong person or suing you for a debt that was forgiven or settled, then you want to know it yourself and you want the other side to know it too. But if they're suing you on a credit card that you think you may be used to own, then it doesn't make sense to verify that fact for them. Remember that they have to prove their case and you're not remembering something is not evidence that they can use to establish the underlying facts. If you have to explain at trial that after the deposition you decided to take another look for records and found records showing that you didn't know the debt that you didn't know about at deposition, then how bad is that? Not that bad. But if you have to admit having received documents that prove the case against you at deposition, then your case is in trouble, big trouble. Because they probably couldn't show the documents without your testimony, but now they can. Finally, take your time understanding and answering the questions you're being asked. Remember that only the words you speak will be reflected in the transcript. But anything you do say will be awfully hard to change later. If you make a habit of pausing, reflecting, and carefully understanding the questions asked before trying to answer, then you can answer more calmly and naturally. This will make you a dangerous witness to the other side. And if your being careful makes them spend a little more time taking the deposition at a cost to them of a few hundred dollars per hour, well, whose problem is that? But if you accidentally say the wrong thing, it will definitely be your problem. Not that it matters, but lawyers respect you when you stand up for yourself, even if it makes them mad. Protect what's yours, and don't let the debt collectors rip you off. My site and materials can help. Go to yourlegalleggup.com. Get my litigation manual and forms, or get the videos, and defend yourself. You'll be glad that you did. You may not consider this video or anything I say in this or any video as legal advice. 
I cannot give you legal advice, but as a former lawyer, I do know the legal process and debt law very well. So use what I say as a source of information and apply your own judgment to your case. To get more help on fighting debt collectors and their lawsuits, go to yourlegalleg.com. Get my litigation manual and forms. If you appreciate this video, please take a second and like it. Subscribe and friend me. As these things will help others find my videos and begin to learn more about the debt litigation process. Defend yourself from the debt collectors. On Facebook or YouTube, as these things help others find my videos and begin to learn more about the debt litigation process. Defend yourself from the debt collectors.